Hi everybody, we're back working on another project again today. Uh, today's project is going to revolve around the Hardy H4 wood boiler that we're going to install here at the house. Um, I'm standing in the backyard. This is the back of the house here. And I'm standing on the pad where we're going to be putting the outdoor wood boiler. So for those of you that don't know how these work, they have a it's a it's a wood stove with a jacket of water around it the wood heats up the water circulates it into the house to whatever kind of heating apparatus you have and then circulates back after it's cooled and it'll heat it back up again so we have to have a way to pipe that water back and forth to the house um, we're going to be coming from that t post there uh, that's marking the end of a piece of conduit that we buried whenever we poured the slab for the house it's about three foot down. It's a piece of Schedule 40 uh, four inch conduit that we're going to poke these uh, pipes through. And then we're going to come over to here. You can't see the elevation change probably very well, but this is a pad that I built out level. And that broken uh, piece of electric fence post is the marker where we need to come up with it. So they sell a standard piping for this, and I checked on that. I was going to buy it. Uh, so I didn't have to go through the effort to make everything, but I checked on it and the, the price that I got from a local supplier here was eight dollars a foot that they wanted for that. So This run here is only about 40 feet. However, I would need to have bought enough of it to get um, Through that conduit up into the house so that I could do that all with one continuous piece of pipe I wouldn't have to have any joints all the way over to here. So I would have ended up buying nearly a hundred feet of that pipe so eight hundred dollars for that um that sounded a little steep i assumed especially for what it was that i could do a little bit better because what their pipe is made out of is this exact same stuff so they use i believe a four inch drain pipe this here is is six inch they run two runs of conduit through it and then that conduit before it runs through the pipe is wrapped in like the bubble insulation that they use on, on sheds, the, the, the in, thin insulation that they use uh, underneath sheet metal and stuff. One, I didn't really like that, and especially for the price, I didn't like that. So I started looking into what I could do to do that myself and decided that I could do it much cheaper. So what we've got here, I've got a 100-foot roll of 6-inch solid corrugated drain tube, uh, drain pipe, that runs that was a hundred and eleven dollars i've got a 100 foot roll of one inch blue pex and a 100 foot roll of one inch red pex uh, those are sixty dollars a piece for a total of 120 dollars and then here i've got 19 sections of pipe insulation this is the standard black split pipe insulation it's a half inch wall so it should offer pretty good insulation value a lot better than the insulation uh, that would have come on that other tubing that I checked on so we're going to use those and put together our own pipe while we're at it uh, something that I'll have the advantage of doing since I'm doing it myself is I can run my power wire from the house so I've also got a roll of 12 2 uh, underground feeder cable and a roll a hundred foot roll of 18.5 thermostat wire the reason for this is I want to I'll, I can explain later how I've got all my electric stuff set up but I want to power the outdoor wood boiler from the house because I'll have a transfer switch set up so that I can run a generator on the house if I ever run out of power so being able to run a the house on the generator that means if the stove is hooked into the house, then if power goes down, I'll still be able to have a heat source. The thermostat wire is, for right now, kind of an extra thing. Um, it was pretty cheap. It was only $24. And so I'm going to go ahead and run it, even though right at the moment I don't plan on using it. Um, there are some ways that things can be set up on these outdoor wood boilers so that the circulation pump only runs whenever there's a demand for heat. Um, I'm not going to actually do that right now, but it could could be set up that way in the future and for $24 having the wire in there uh, will be will be handy 
So to go over the, the cost for what this is actually going to run doing this all myself, am I actually gaining anything? Uh, so here are the prices, and this is uh, fall of 2021, so building materials have been pretty high. They're, they're on the decline, but they are still, still fairly high, so those are the prices that we're dealing with. So I've got these two rolls of PEX at $59.95 from PEX Universe. Um, so those run $120 total. The 19 sections of insulation uh, are a total of $80. The 100 foot of 12-2 wire was $90. The 100 foot of 18-5 wire was $25. And the 100 foot of 6 inch uh, solid drain pipe, corrugated drain pipe, was $111. So add all those up, that's $426 uh, to build almost 100 feet of this uh, piping, of this tube. Um, the only thing I'm a little short on that I didn't actually need the full 100 feet on would be the insulation. So at 389 per six foot um, you could add a little bit to that but if, that is also with the extra wires uh, the the 12 2 and the thermostat wire that the other the other stuff that I priced didn't come with so altogether we're right around four four dollars and 26 cents a foot for this uh, with the extra the, the added wires if I were to do just the the drain pipe with the pecs and insulation that's down around $3.11. So definitely a more economical way to do it. Um, it's not always the best solution to, to make your own products, especially when things are available. Obviously it'd be a lot faster, but for literally half the price for $400 instead of $800, um, I think I'll be able to do this and actually have a better product whenever, whenever I come out the end of it. So we'll get to work and start putting this together and see how it works out and see if we can get it installed. Okay, we've got all of our pipes laid out. <clears throat> we got insulation put on. Those are six inch pieces of insulation. I duct taped at each seam where they where they butt together. We've got our 12 gauge wire and our 18 gauge wire. You'll notice that the 12 and 18 gauge wires are not duct taped to the, the pipe. The reason for that is I'm hoping that should I ever need to replace either of those wires or anything um, with those being loose in there, I stand at least stand a chance of being able to pull something through. I know it wouldn't be easy, but I definitely wouldn't be able to if I zip tied or duct taped those together. You can see that's the, the length. I just laid it out here on the ground. In order to keep everything still, to be able to pull everything tight, I've undone it now, but I temporarily drove a T-post here I duct taped the ends of everything to that T-post, and then I was able to, to pull on it. The baby goats were here, hoping to help the whole time. They didn't do much. They're not much good for work. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, we've got this all put together. This here is the uninsulation, uninsulated portion uh, that's going to be going in the house. Um, it's going to be above the floor. So once I get it in the house, then I can I can insulate it if I need to, which I probably will. Uh, but for right now, it'll help uh, ease getting that pipe started through there. So I think it'll make it a little bit easier. We've got on the other end, this will be the end that connects to the stove. I've got just a, a length sticking out here. Uh, it'll likely get cut off shorter, but I wanted to make sure to have plenty. And then here, we've got our black pipe laid out and cut to length. It's not all that long of a piece. It's only about 40 feet, but that's what we need to go under the ground. Um, so now we're going to have to try to get this poked through there. I've got a couple ideas on how to do it. I think we're going to start, uh, since the pipe is fairly big, we're just going to try and, and poke it in there by hand from this end and maybe drag the black pipe down the pecs. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll try to get a rope or a string worked all the way through this pipe, tie off that pipe to something, a post or something, and then see if I can pull the pecs through it. So it's going to be a little trial and error to see how it, how it goes, but 
it's uh, going pretty well so far. Okay, that didn't work. <clears throat> On to plan B. So we're going to try and get a rope pulled through this black pipe. Um, I don't really have a good way to even get the rope through there. Uh, I should probably have a fish tape or something like that, but we're going to work with what we've got. So I've got this brilliant idea. <laughs> I've, I've seen similar things done with a vacuum cleaner on conduit, uh, pulling a string through a piece of conduit. Um, I don't have a vacuum cleaner big enough. That may reverse, but I don't think it does. I think it's a blow only. So, what we've got is, we've got a plastic bag stuffed with some trash to kind of take up some volume, tied to about 35,622 bale strings off of small bales that we've fed throughout the, the year. And that loops around and we've got that tied to our rope just in case this actually works i want it to go ahead and suck the rope in but if we can just get the bag through there and get the little string through then we can pull the rope through i'll try and get this set up so that we can see this work if it happens i want it on video okay Well, I couldn't have asked for much of anything better than that. Look at this. Sometimes I amaze myself. That is beautiful. Now we'll see how this goes. We've got the rope taped up that full length and tied around to the PEX tubing. The rope then goes through the black tube. We've got the black tube here tied off to the tow hooks on the front of the pickup. And we'll see what we can do, see if we can get this to thread through there. Looks like that worked pretty well. We've got our pipe sticking out for the conduit. We're fed all the way through. Next will be to dig the trench and put it in the ground. Well, it's a couple days later now. We're gonna go get the old 420 Ford backhoe and see if we can get a trench dug there where that orange line is. It's been a few weeks now, 
Uh, after we got the trench dug, we just continued to get rains after rains after rains. It would dry up for a couple days, and then it would rain again. So I also had a little bit of trouble getting the pipes pulled through the conduit that was buried in the ground. I'll show you how I ended up getting that done later, but I kind of just finally got this closed up. As you can see, I made a pretty good mess here with the backhoe as we tried to fill it in. I also, while we were at it, I made myself a little walkway that'll come from the house and then we can just walk straight across that uh, up over to where the wood stove is going to be. We got the pad leveled out a little more. Uh, I got some gravel put out so we're going to get that prepped and ready to hopefully put the wood stove up this weekend. Um, I ended up with plenty of pipe left over so that's a good thing we can just cut off what we don't need uh, but now i'll take you inside and show you what we've got in there and how i got it pulled through the pipe okay we're inside now we can show you the conduit that we had to pull that through so you can see there was plenty of room but going around the the sweep elbow down in the ground proved to be pretty difficult so i tried several things we ran some wire through that conduit with a fish tape tried to pull it. I tried uh, wrapping it around this this block and pulling it by hand. Uh, this is like fencing wire. Um, I just broke it when I was trying to pull through because it wouldn't move. So what I ended up doing is using this ratchet strap around the top plate here. It happened to be reasonably in line with the conduit. And then on the pecs, I got some brass plugs and drilled through the center got some eye bolts and uh, put a nut on the back of there and then crimped it on so I'd have something good to tie to and then I doubled the runs of wire that I tied to those eye bolts so there was four strands of wire total going through the conduit that I pulled on and we finally got it pulled through it inch by inch but it uh, it came through so I intended to get more of that process on camera I thought I had some more videos, but when I came here to put the video together, apparently not. So I apologize for that, but we got it stuck through and got it buried. So the next step is going to be setting the stove up, getting it hooked up. Um, and then we've got some other stuff to do as far as figuring out uh, which one of these goes where. I lost the pictures that I had uh, that, that told me all that. So we're going to have to do some stuff to figure that out. Uh, I'll put those all in videos, so keep an eye out for those, and we'll see you later.